So welcome back to hot and steamy Florida. We recently just got done doing our composite decking out here on our pool deck. And in today's episode, we're gonna move into post sleeves, some trim around the bottom, post caps, and what I'm most excited about is some composite railing that we're gonna put in with aluminum balusters. I picked them up for a really good price. Hopefully they fit in well and look good. This should really complete the look of the deck. So that's what we're about in today's episode. All right, so here are my post sleeves. They come in 10 foot sections. We're gonna cut them down. And I got them from a company called Weatherables if you're looking for any post sleeves and caps and solar lights, anything like that. By the way, I have no affiliation with them. They don't even know I'm giving them a shout out. The reason I'm doing that is they were the only company out of everyone I looked at that gave me free shipping. I think it was a mistake. I ordered 700 and something dollars worth of stuff and they shipped it via semi. All the other companies were quoting me $500 to ship $700 worth of stuff, but I got it for free from this company. So, holy smokes, that was a huge savings right there. So, let's get these big PVC sleeves out, and we're going to have to cut them down to length. So, first and foremost, I need to see how these caps go on. Okay, they go on the outside. That's excellent. So, that means we can cut these sleeves to the exact height of the post, and we're good to go. You could have got all different kinds of decorative post caps. They even had solar ones and I considered it, but there's so many posts out here, I did not want to get too much solar going on because it really messes with your night vision. And we love sitting out on a deck, looking at the stars, maybe we might light a little fire pit, but I like to keep things really dim. So we're gonna add additional solar lights to this a little later on. So let's roughly check our post. They're all right at 40 inches. I did it that way on purpose because I got these in 10 foot lengths or 120 inches and I can perfectly get three of them out of this. I should also mention it seems to be industry standard to do a 40 inch post too whenever I was looking at my composite railing kits. Most of them are 36 inches high and they'll leave a gap in the bottom and they call for a 40 inch post. So this should all work out perfect. Now this is gonna be interesting. My saw is not gonna cut all the way through this. Let's see what we can accomplish here. And the good news is because we're trimming the top and the bottom of the post sleeve, we don't have to be perfect. And it's a good thing we don't have to be perfect because I had my saw set up for a one degree cut from something I was doing with the composite decking and uh, I just really messed this cut up. Hey, we all make mistakes. All right, now we're getting somewhere. It's a nice snug fit. So what I picked up from Lowe's is called a contemporary composite railing kit. And it comes with two six foot top and bottom caps right here, as well as a bunch of aluminum balusters that go in between them. And then all your mounting brackets and hardware that go to the post itself. This all looks relatively straightforward. Let's go ahead and figure one out. I mean, we should have everything we need in the box. Now I will say this does say that you need post six foot dead on center, specific measurements. Well, none of mine is set up perfectly for this, but being this is a PVC or a composite right here, we should better cut this right off to whatever length we need to custom fit the different sizes in between my post out here. Now, if you wind up using one of these kits, you need to be careful. There is a top and a bottom. They look exactly the same, but it's all in how these pieces fit on, and we don't want to see any grooves to where these pieces snap together. You want that to be down beneath this if this would be the top cap. So pay attention to that before you go off installing these. There is a top, there is a bottom. So I'm gonna go grab some quick measurements between our first set of posts 
and I'm just gonna cut these down. I'm not gonna take the same amount off of one inch. So for example, if I need to take three inches off of this to fit between my post, I'll take an inch and a half off of this end, inch and a half off of that end. That way my balusters stay perfectly centered in between the post. It'll just look better as you're looking across at the railings. I'll go ahead and get a measurement top and bottom because these posts have warped some sitting out in the sun and you don't have to make it perfectly tight. There is some play, some leeway inside of those brackets it looks like. All right, so after you determine your top and the bottom, which is easy to do, so we know bottom's gonna be facing up with the holes so the balusters can drop in, but what really tells you top to bottom, you see this piece right here, the flare on the bottom, that should go away from you because that is where the decorative trim, snap-on trim right here that you can put on is going to meet up. And we don't wanna see those gaps up in there. We want them down. So when the balusters are facing up, and this flare out of your mounting brackets is down, you know you've got the proper piece. And this is important. I don't know why they didn't include it this way from the factory, but we need to drill a couple of quarter inch holes on the bottom because rainwater is going to collect in here. We don't want it building up over time, corroding our balusters, and just creating a nasty atmosphere. So I'm going to drill two quarter inch holes. Make for sure you've figured out your top and bottom before you do this, or well, you've just ruined the look of everything. That'll be fine, it can never fill up with water enough that it can't run out of those. Actually, you know what, we'll put a third one in the middle in case we get a really heavy downpour. All right, next, before we mount this piece, there is a bottom center support. It's just a piece of PVC that we have to go ahead and mount this bracket in that comes with a screw. And we're gonna put it dead center of the bottom of this right here. And then the PVC will slide over it and it's just a support to keep your rail from sagging. This will make contact with the deck itself. And we'll attach this piece. All right, now that'll give us a support. So we've got our drain holes and our center support on our bottom piece. Now we can insert this extend our brackets out, get our level on here, go grab some fasteners, and get ready to attach this. Now we want to lock our rail into these mounting blocks. There is screw holes on either side that we'll take one of these small screws and put right into it, locking this in place. You don't want to ever grab a hold of your rail and feel it jiggle back and forth. Now we can snap one of these decorative trim rings on and we're done. Now we'll come along with our aluminum balusters that's included in the kit. Just loosely drop them in. Now we can come back with our top cap and slowly start working the balusters into it. Everything should be level if it's all making contact with the bottom and it's perfect. And we'll get everything nice and plumb, evenly spaced on these posts and just repeat the same process that we just done. It is nice and sturdy this way, and you know people are bound to laying on railing like this. It just happens. That's why you have that support down there in the dead center of the bottom. Because when you put this top railing on and make for sure it's making contact with these balusters, and the bottom balusters are sandwiched tightly in the bottom piece, it's transferring that weight in the middle right down to that center support. So that should really help with sag. Now we're starting to look like a deck. Nice. I love the finishing touches. It really wraps everything up.
Well, as often is the case, you get what you pay for. So it's my job to let y'all know when there's really good products and things out there and bad ones. These decorator grab and go rail kits from Lowe's, I think I'd recommend you spend more money and get a better rail kit, whatever that may be. So the first issue I had is, could never find them in stock, had to travel to three different stores. Then I kept finding all the missing hardware components out of the box. It took forever to finally find enough boxes to do my job. Now what I'm finding is the aluminum balusters that's supposed to go in these pre-drilled holes from factory, they won't even fit. So now I'm having to drill out all the holes. And look, somebody was having a really bad day at the factory. I don't know if the camera's picking it up. They're like oblong holes. I don't know what the heck happened. So while I saved really good money, I've lost time having to do all the running around, find the hardware packets, and now having to drill out all the holes that should have been done like that from factory. So now what this also means is I'm gonna have a sloppy fit of my balusters down in here. So if people go up to this railing and touch it, it's gonna be, well, noisy and loose fitting. I don't like that. Luckily, it's only been on the last end pieces I've been experiencing this. You just don't never know what you're getting out of these boxes. Also, fortunately for me, the bottom rail was drilled out correctly, so I don't have sloppy fitting holes down there which visually would look horrible. Then we would have a problem. Of course, I didn't discover that my holes were wrong until after I've already cut these pieces, so there's no way I could even return this. Oh boy, I need to go back and get my hat. After all this work, we are completed, kind of. There's still a ton of work left to do on the deck itself and out here for landscaping, but the deck is usable now. And boy, does it look a whole lot different with all that railing. So let's take a look at everything. I like it, looks nice, complete and finished now. At first, I wasn't sure about going with the big six by sixes, but due to the size of this deck, I think they look just fine. I think four by fours would look too small. All right, so other than some complications with the rail kits themselves, with the holes not being drilled out properly and everything else I explained, missing hardware, well, that's just brand specific. Overall, putting in the composite railing, this is easily a one person job. This was not complicated at all. The most complicated part of this entire build to me was just how tedious putting down the composite decking was. Nothing super complicated about it, but hard working with the big stuff by yourself and so many fasteners to put in. So this was a nice change right here, doing the rail kits, having everything already set up for me. Um, I thought it was a quick, easy process. This is definitely something you can do yourself. All right, so before we wrap this episode up, let's play a game real quick. We did the same thing on the outdoor kitchen build. Let's play the how much did this cost game. And by the way, we're not doing this for bragging or anything else. The whole purpose of this channel is to motivate you to attempt to do things and don't be scared to fail. That's okay, you learn how to do it better the next time. But in today's economic situation, there is huge money to save by doing small projects all the way up to building your own house like we did on the channel. The labor rates are through the roof, and for good reason, because a lot of people are not doing things themselves nowadays, and there's a ton of work out there for people. Prices go up, materials have went up, cost of living's went up, so it's understandable. But it's starting to get to the point that it's just outrageous. So if you've watched the deck build up to this point, you know how much extra we did. 12 inch on center floor joist, we taped everything. We've just kind of went overboard here. Nice composite decking, composite railing, PVC wrap posts, you know, the works right here. 
Plus, we've got a 27 foot above ground pullback here. It's a little bit nicer one with resin uprights and big top caps. Now, yes, it's still an above ground pull. The nice way to go is in ground, we get it. But we're on a budget here. So pause the video and let me know, what do you think the deck cost? What do you think the pull costs? And let's just do an overall package price right here. Keep in mind, I installed everything myself. I did have a few friends come over and help me with the pool. The deck was 100% a solo job. All right, so let's go over the information and I also share this so you can have realistic expectations of what things cost. Now, again, I don't know the labor in your area. And the good news is you can go buy all this materials at your big box stores and the pricing is well consistent across the country. So you can't argue, oh, it's where I live and the cost of materials are less. Well, I often get on Home Depot and Lowe's, for example, and price materials out from say California to where I live in Florida. And often I find materials are even cheaper over there, I guess because of the way they come in the ports. But overall, they're all relatively similar. But as you see with the upgraded composite decking with 50 year warranty, composite everything, aluminum post wrap, I have $7,000 in this deck right here. And here's the really cool thing. I priced it out doing it in wood because I seriously considered trying to save the money and just doing an all wood deck. You know, wood deck boards, wood railings, it's kind of the cheaper way to do it and just seal it or stain it. You can do it for about half the price right there. It used to be that labor cost about what materials do, but for the first time ever, and especially over the last few years, labor often is more than materials, at least some of the quotes that I've been getting on the few things that I quote out every now and then. Now that's gonna vary depending on the job and the materials and just what's going on. Labor also varies wildly based on where you live. It is area specific and dependent based on household income and cost of living. So keep all that in mind. Now the pool back here, we waited till winter. We did that on purpose. We figured we could catch it on sale and we did. We have 3,000 something dollars in the pool. I'm just gonna round it up to 4,000. I can't remember specifically. And that's with the filter, the pump, that copper ionizer and everything else. So total package for this full composite deck, the pool, everything as you see it, doing it yourself, about $11,000. My guess is if I paid somebody to come put all this in, it'd be about three times that cost. I'm talking full excavation of the pool and put in, full labor on the deck. I don't know, but I was curious to see your thoughts and what your expected labor and material rates are in your area right there. So I always love going back and reading comments on this. And again, we're just doing this for sheer information for you, the viewer. This is a DIY channel. I love to inspire you to get out and tackle projects, whether small, whether medium-sized projects, or again, whether it be building your own house. There is huge savings out there, and that's why I'm such a huge believer in doing things myself. Now, I'm also a realist and understand that a lot of y'all well, you don't have what it takes, maybe physical disabilities, maybe lack of tools and everything else to do some of these jobs. But I always say, I mean, look at the savings I got on this deck. I could go buy every single tool that I use on this project and still have a tremendous savings. And then I would have those tools to use again on a future project. They would literally pay for themselves and labor savings on this. So don't ever use the tool excuse. I get that from people all the time. Must be nice having the tools and being able to build that type of stuff. I don't have the tools. We'll go buy the tools save the money, and then save the money again on the next project, and the next project, and the next project. Well, this dramatically changes the look of the deck. It looks finished now, but I think we're gonna enclose the bottom side of the deck, uh, make that look a little better. We've gotta run plumbing and electrical out here to the deck as well, before we start getting into a massive landscaping project. Then eventually we're gonna build a roll across custom built security gate right here, so we can close it up when we have company or to keep the dogs out of the pool. And then we're just gonna have more and more things coming after that. The furniture out here, the deck boxes. We're gonna mount an umbrella in a special way that we get shade in the pool or on the deck. So this is gonna be an ongoing series here, especially once we tie it into the landscaping, which is gonna be really exciting. We have a lot of really cool stuff for the landscaping itself. Thank you all who watch and support the channel. Hey, I do wanna take a quick second to say, I've been getting a lot of complaints from viewers that they're getting unsubscribed from the channel. And I'm not the only person experiencing this. I'm hearing other channels having this problem as well. I don't ever pitch the channel or tell you, please subscribe and all that stuff. But what I am gonna tell you to do is go down beneath the video check and see if you are subscribed or if you're unsubscribed because it's been happening a lot here lately. Resubscribe if you want to watch the channel and want to get notified of the content. And just to the right of that subscribe button, there's a little bell icon. If you don't click that bell and turn on all notifications, you will not be notified 
whenever I post a video. It'll be at random, but if you wanna know every time we post, which is several days a week, make sure you click on that bell. All right, thank y'all so much for watching. Thanks for making the deck build a success. We'll catch you on the next video.